Hello, I'm David Botstein. Uh, I'm uh, the director of the Lewis Sigler Institute uh, for Integrative Genomics at Princeton, uh, whose uh, beautiful building you see before you. Uh, the institute was uh, founded with a dual mandate uh, to do teaching and research at the interface of uh, biology and the more quantitative sciences, computer science, physics, and chemistry uh, on the other. And what I'm here to tell you about today uh, is a curriculum that we've developed uh, with that idea in mind. Uh, what we do is we uh, allow freshmen who have an interest in becoming professional scientists uh, to choose between the standard way of becoming a physics major or a chemistry major or a biology major uh, and an integrated introductory uh, course, which I'm going to tell you about, uh, where they uh, spend the first two years um, learning all of these areas together uh, in an integrated way uh, and, as you'll see, with a much higher quantitative emphasis uh, than you would have in anything but uh, probably uh, the physics curriculum. So uh, the uh, curriculum is aimed at students uh, who, who uh, are willing to do the math. Uh, and uh, it's really a matter of willing. Uh, most uh, entering freshmen at Princeton have calculus uh, uh, credit uh, from the uh, advanced placement, and we basically tell the students that if they want to do this, they need to have calculus BC uh, or the equivalent. Uh, it's not intended for every student. Uh, the curriculum was designed from the very first not to replace anything. We're not reforming things. We're giving students a choice, an alternative. Um, the curriculum integrates math, physics, and chemistry and computation all the way through. Uh, it, uh, we start at the most introductory level. Other than calculus, we don't expect them to have learned anything except, you know, sort of sta standard high school stuff. Um, and uh, we point this in the direction of a project-based laboratory course, which they typically take in the third year if they want to continue in the, uh, uh, the general area of quantitative biology. Um, we have to emphasize that the outcome here is that the students end up becoming physics majors or chemistry majors along with everybody else. So the advanced stuff is not integrated or separate or whatever except to the degree that the student does that for him or herself. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, the reason we're motivated to do this is what I call the cultural gap. Um, especially from the point of view of biologists. Uh, the education of biologists has become much less quantitative in my lifetime. Uh, most colleges require minimal mathematics, no physics, uh, or, or physics without calculus, if you can believe that, and no computation. Uh, quantitative preparation is limited to the prerequisite courses, uh, which are not notable for their success, uh, largely because they try to teach a very heterogeneous groups of students uh, and very large numbers of them. And most uh, U.S. biology PhD students, uh, PhD students uh, have only had one year math. The, it's become a real problem for biology because the genome and the computer have completely changed the rules. Uh, and the cultural gap has become so serious that it's sometimes hard for physicists and biologists or statisticians and biologists to actually communicate effectively uh, and work, uh, work together. And uh, cross-training at the graduate and postdoctoral uh, uh, level has not been uh, notably successful. So that's why we want an integrated curriculum. The first thing uh, of how to do it uh, is uh, you have to uh, get together with your colleagues uh, uh, in physics and chemistry, uh, biology, and uh, computer science, and you have to decide what you want to teach. And the first thing you realize is that the integrated curriculum can't be the sum of everything. Okay? Uh, what we did was we studied every idea that is taught in the standard introductory courses and we put them into two piles. Things that we all agreed across the divides of the disciplines, uh, all agreed are really fundamental and uh, a lot of things which we thought are really just traditional 
And then we threw out the traditional, looked at how much we had to teach, added in the things that are missing from, uh, from even the traditional curriculum uh, and uh, uh, ensemble, and uh, made a program. Other thing we decided was that we were going to teach everything just once. Uh, for example, teaching calculus in the guise of physics, and teaching calculus again in the guise of, of chemical reaction rates, and then teaching calculus again as a mathematical thing didn't make sense to us. And we believe very much in the just-in-time principle. Okay? Uh, we don't believe in learn this now, it's good for you later. The, a, a, a professional scientist has to be a lifetime learner, and we, most of that learning is going to be when you realize that you need it and not uh, preparation in, years in advance. And we, of course, uh, have organized this course in such a way that the students can uh, actually migrate into other tracks uh, without a great deal of difficulty so that the introductory requirements uh, are met. This required, as you may imagine, a certain amount of negotiation. But we, we, because we started out as a collaboration, uh, it worked out. Okay, how do we distinguish the fundamental from the traditional? Well, uh, we don't teach a lot of history. We don't teach things that people already know. For example, uh, how do we know DNA is the genetic material? Well, in 1943, uh, there was a very famous experiment by Avery McLeod and McCarty. But there are two reasons why we don't teach about that. One is, the students already believe that DNA is a genetic material. They watch uh, CSI and they watch uh, uh, Law and Order, and uh, they're not in doubt about this, so we don't have to convince them. And the experiment that uh, uh, Avery did is completely obsolete. You wouldn't do it that way today. On the other hand, we do teach uh, the method of Lurie and Delbrook for measuring mutation rates because if you want to know for sure what a mutation rate is today, you still have to do it the way they did it in 1943. So that's a, a good example of fundamental versus uh, 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 traditional. Uh, how do we measure Avogadro's number? Okay. Well, we have many choices. There are many ways to do this, and we chose one which has the most resonance in all the different fields, as you'll see. Um, how do we find the right distribution in, in, in statistical significance? A perennial problem, and uh, the standard way of teaching it is really very bad, we, in our opinion. What we do is we teach the students first how to do a simulation and get an approximation from a computer, and only then uh, worrying about uh, what, um, uh, uh, what a closed form expression or what the distribution might actually look uh, at. And so the answers to one, two, and three are, uh, we would do it by sequencing today, uh, we would do it by Brownian motion, we teach them Brownian motion, and uh, by simulation. Okay, so what did we actually do? Year one, we have a double credit course, it's half of the student's time, five hours a lecture a week, a lab, a computer lab in section, uh, and it's equivalent to four one semester courses in the Ivy League. <coughs> uh, and the year two, it's two regular courses. Uh, the uh, faculty is a sort of, you know, Noah's Ark of, uh, uh, of people in different fields. Uh, and uh, the asterisks are people who are members of the National Academy. So this is not, the, this is not a bunch of postdocs who's doing this. Okay? Um, uh, we have a laboratory uh, a section and we have Lewis Sigler Fellows who uh, teach in the laboratory. Uh, and uh, we uh, have um, uh, an opportunity to take a project laboratory for those who want to continue in quantitative biology. So the integrated approach is this is what we do. What we, the beginning, freshman year, they come in and we start to teach them about things uh, from the point of view of the mathematics used to describe them. So linear models, differential equations, probabilistic models, fields, quantum world, and so on, as you can see on the slide. Uh, I'll give you just one example. When we get to the dynamical models, the differential equations, what happens is that Bill uh, will uh, take them through uh, the whole, uh, b uh, you know, derivation of Newton's laws, uh, which is, of course, uh, what 
calculus, what differential equations were invented for. And then the chemists will uh, go through uh, chemical reaction rates. Uh, it turns out to be the same mathematics. And then uh, typically I will teach about DNA reassociation kinetics, which is again the same mathematics. And so by the end of that time, everybody gets the idea that this particular su subset of mathematical things is worth knowing. Okay, we have problem sets. We, they're very demanding and uh, they uh, bo use both analytic and uh, computer methods. We have a laboratory uh, in which we uh, teach uh, um, uh, basic principles with the technology of today. Okay? The whole idea here is to uh, take things, some of which are very old, like Brownian motion and Luria Delbrook, but still to teach them uh, by today's technology. And the, uh, of course, the data then get used in computer science stuff. Uh, I think I neglected to say that, of course, from the very beginning, uh, they are, the first thing that they uh, do is learn how to program in Java and MATLAB. Um, here is the measurement experiment. It's the falling ball viscometer. There you see a student dropping it in and doing it by hand. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the partner is there with a the stopwatch. Uh, and then that turns into a, a thing on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the monitor over here. And then they measure on the monitor. And by the end of the day, they've migrated from <coughs> the 17th century, where this was subject to, you know, how fast can you push the button, how good is the stopwatch, and so forth and so on, uh, and uh, what's the parallax, uh, to taking pictures with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, with a camera, and then uh, doing the calculations in the computer. Um, they, this is the uh, Brownian motion experiment. As you see, the data are very good. <coughs> this is student data. And uh, in the second year, uh, we get less physical in chemistry, and we have more chemistry and biology, but it's still the same philosophy. Uh, we uh, substitutes for genetics and biochemistry prerequisites, uh, and it includes uh, we are relentlessly quantitative. We teach all kinds of quantitative things. So the pr principles and practices are focus on the important ideas and do them well. Uh, teach every idea from the viewpoint and the technology of today. Um, and never go out of the way to teach from history. Uh, and never go for coverage. What we want is skill and not coverage and breadth. Um, st the students are enrolled uh, by self-selection. If you want to do this at home, you have to have a very realistic description of the content and level so the students don't do the wrong thing. We provide lots of problem sets and help sessions, and in fact, we encourage the students to discuss the problems among themselves, and they uh, hand in uh, their understanding at the end of the, uh, all of that. Uh, and uh, we have been evolving the program because if it doesn't work, we change it. So, what are the outcomes? Well, uh, when we came to Princeton, it was a big issue that uh, fewer and fewer students uh, are wanting to go to graduate school uh, to become scientists. And we see, appear to be reversing that trend. Uh, we've had 41 who finished the freshman course. Uh, the, the majority have uh, uh, gotten a certificate. And as you see from the list, they have gotten into, and, and they are in the leading uh, graduate schools that are interested in quantitative biology and genomics. And uh, uh, statistics continue to be good. And uh, that's it, uh, except to say that this is a picture of the pioneer class, the first class that took this program. And uh, this is, they had a double course. Uh, the exams were really challenging. The problem sets were really hard. Their morale, however, was so good that what you see here, uh, this photograph was taken about five minutes at the, after the end of the final examination, and they had had nothing better to do uh, during finals week than to design a t-shirt uh, and organize it so that they're all wearing it uh, to the final. So uh, we think uh, that one of the maybe most important take-home lessons uh, is that maybe the standard a program of prerequisites, um, far from being too challenging, is not challenging enough intellectually. That there's lots of competition, but the competition is for grades. And what we have done is tried to substitute competition for understanding. Thank you very much for your attention.